Good morning, everyone, and welcome. This is going to be our Unit 9 video on AP Computer Science A. My name is Meek. I'm going to be teaching this class way better than your teachers can. Today, we're going to be covering stuff like class inheritance, uh, the super keyword, uh, inheriting methods, inheriting constructors, etc., etc. So let's get right into like a conceptual understanding of what's going on here. So the main theme of this unit is the theme of inheritance. So what is inheritance? Inheritance is when you have a class, let's call that class animals, you have an animal class, and you can have a more specific class, like let's say you have the sheep class, okay? Where the sheep class is an animal, okay? So if I draw my flow diagram here, we have an animal class, and associated with that animal class is an animal has a weight, an animal has a size, animal has a top speed, and then down here we have a sheep class, where a sheep has a weight, it has a size, it has a velocity, but it also has stuff like color, has stuff like HP, and all of this. And we could say that a sheep is an animal, okay? So if we wanted to conserve time and energy and effort, we could write the animal class, which is sort of a general class. It contains conventional attributes for an animal. It might also contain different methods for an animal, like move, or eat. Okay, so these are the general attributes and general methods that go along with being an animal and we can have a more particular case of being an animal that is a sheep. Now a sheep is going to have all these attributes, it's going to be able to do all these methods, but a sheep might also have additional attributes associated with it. It, like we said, it has a color in addition to all of these. So when we write the sheep class, uh, we're not going to want to redefine all these attributes, we're not going to want to rewrite all the methods, we're just going to inherit them. We're going to inherit them from a parent class, the animal class being the parent class, okay? So it's like a tree in this case. So let's start looking at this in action. So up here we have uh, a project that I worked on back when I took this class, and the purpose of this project was to demonstrate the application of all nine units we learned up until this point, okay? So particularly, I want to to demonstrate the implication of inheritance, okay? So here is my main method. So we see the public static void main string args that denotes that this is the main method. And up here, I have my three classes that I wrote. Here is my general class, the plan class. For some context, this was a project that I made as sort of like a fitness app or fitness tracker. Very primitive, very rudimentary, okay? I wasn't prepared to spend like 800 hours on this. Anyway, so in my workout program, you have different types of workout plans, okay? So you could have the name of the workout plan. You could have the type of foods associated with that plan. You have the type of exercise, the total calorie intake of that workout plan, and the amount of calories that are burned through your exercise. These are all going to be attributes of the general plan parent class. And then we have particular classes, more specific classes, like this is the build muscle class. And if we want the build muscle class to inherit the properties from a parent class, we would include this syntax. When we declare our build muscle class, we would declare public class build muscle, and when we inherit stuff from plan, we were going to say that it extends plan. That is the syntax we're going to use when we want to pull attributes, pull methods from a parent class. Okay? So here, you'll notice that this is the constructor for the build muscle class. Okay? And if we look back at our plan class, you'll see there's a constructor for the plan class. So one important thing to note is that whenever you have inheritance, whenever you have one class extending another, the constructor from the parent class is not inherited. So a little uh, word I want to introduce to all of us so we're not confused when I talk about it. The parent class is the class being inherited, and the subclass is the class that is inheriting. 
the subclass is the more specific that is inheriting stuff from the general parent class, okay? So our subclass is going to need its own constructor because you cannot inherit a constructor from a parent class. So here is the constructor that I wrote for the build muscle class. You'll see that it takes two parameters and you see this new word that we've never looked at before, the super word. That is a keyword that is going to be part of the inheritance unit. So what does super do? Super calls a method or calls a constructor from the parent class, okay? So in the constructor method, if I use the word super, that inherently calls the constructor of the parent class. So let's take another look at the constructor in the parent class. Constructor in the parent class takes two inputs, two parameters, n and e, and it sets n and e to these. It also uh, initializes the transexer attribute. Okay, so when I call this super with the n e parameters, that calls the constructor from plan. And so the constructor from plan executes this code in the constructor. And then after the constructor from plan executes, we continue executing in the build muscle constructor, which has another goal attribute to initialize. Okay. So even though the build muscle constructor pulled code from the plan constructor, we still created a build muscle object. We did not create a plan object. Okay. That's important thing to note that you are creating the build muscle object with the build muscle constructor, but the build muscle constructor is borrowing code from the parent. This is one of the few cases in which you are going to need to actually specify and sort of initiate pulling code from a parent class, okay? The attributes from the parent class are inherited by default, okay? The methods from the parent class are inherited by default. In the constructor is a special case where you're actually going to need to manually pull in the constructor from the parent class if you want to. Now, if you do not call the constructor from the parent class, if I comment this out, if you guys have never heard of commenting, it's when you add two double slashes like this and you can type code that doesn't actually get read or executed or any of that. Commonly, what we use comments for is descriptions, okay? But you can also just put double slashes in front of anything that you want to quickly delete or you want to quickly make sure the computer doesn't read that. Anyway, if we comment out this super, so whenever you call the build muscle constructor, the computer automatically calls a constructor from the parent class, but it, ca it calls the default constructor. It calls the constructor that initializes all of the attributes to their default values, and it is the constructor that takes zero parameters, okay? So, because when I do build a build muscle object, that build muscle object has this uh, attribute and it has all of these attributes. So all of these attributes need to become initialized. So that's why if you do not super a particular constructor from the parent class, the computer automatically calls a constructor from the parent class, which initializes everything to the default value. That is called an implicit call to the constructor versus an explicit call to the constructor, which is your super call. Okay, so now let's take a look at inheriting methods from a parent class. So, for example, one of the methods that I wrote for the plan class is this method public string get name returns the name of the exercise plan. Okay, so that means that when I instantiate a build muscle object, that object is going to inherit all of the methods, all of the behaviors of the parent plan class, okay? But what I can do here is I can override a method. So we already discussed that if you create a subclass, that subclass can have uh, methods of its own. That subclass can introduce new methods that were not originally part of the parent class. But what the subclass can also do is it can rewrite methods of the parent class, or rather overwrite methods of the parent class. So for example, if I wanted to take this getName method that I declared in the parent class, 
I could paste it into my subclass and I can redefine what it does. Instead of returning the name of the workout plan, I might have it return the goal. Okay, so in doing so, in writing a method that retains exactly the same name and uh, accepts exactly the same parameters as a method in the parent class, then whenever I call this method get name, it will execute this method. It will execute the method that was declared in the subclass instead of executing the method declared in the parent class. So we already discussed that if I create a build muscle object, that build muscle object is going to be able to call methods that were declared in the plan class, the parent class, okay? But I can only call those methods in the main method, okay? I can only make calls to those methods if I am executing code onto an instantiated object. However, in the build muscle class, in the build muscle file, I cannot call methods from the parent class. I will need to use the super keyword again. Okay, so let me give you an example so that it's easier for us to understand. Let's continue using this example of the get name overrided method that I just showed us. So we could return the goal plus, uh, let me include a space. What if when I want to call the get name method, it returns the goal as defined in the subclass, but I also want it to return the name as defined in the parent class. If, in order to do that, I could continue with my executing of this overrided method, and then I could use the super keyword to call a method from the parent class. So I could do super get name. So let's say I go to the main method and I instantiate a build muscle object, and let's say I call it K, okay? If I want to call the get name method of the build muscle object, I would do k.getName. Okay? So when I call the get name method, this piece of code executes. It returns the goal instance variable right here, and it calls the get name method from the plan class. Okay? If in writing the code inside one of your subclasses, if you want to make a call to a method in a parent class, you need to use the super keyword in order to call that method. All right, so that's largely all of the syntax and coding we need to know for this unit. So some important things to note usually on the FRQ that asks you to write a whole class you will probably never see inheritance. Inheritance is something that is largely tested on the multiple choice section. Okay, now with that being said, we need to discuss a more concepts-based, uh, aside from the coding part of this unit, and that is the idea of the object superclass. Okay, on your reference table, there at the very bottom, there is the object class that is present on your reference table. The object class contain methods such as the dot equals method and the to string method, okay? So the importance of the object class is the object class is the universal parent class. Every class in the entirety of Java inherits the object class, okay? So that means all of the attributes and all of the methods of the object class the methods of the object class being listed on your reference table are inherited by every class created in Java, okay? Which means every class has a two-string method. Everything has a two-string method. If you want to override the two-string method and rewrite the two-string method in order to print out values in a certain order, or if you want to omit certain values when you call the two-string method, that's how you would do it. You would override the two-string method that you inherited from the parent objects class. Okay, that's largely everything for this unit. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Enjoy life. If you need extra help, uh, you come to my Discord server.